I love all enchiladas, but in my view, there are three distinct categories of them. You have your traditional Mexican, your Tex-Mex, and then what I like to call suburban mom enchiladas. You know, the ones with like a bunch of cheese, sour cream, and they make the best leftovers. Now, all three of these enchiladas are similar in the fact that they are filled in sauce tortillas, but that's about it. They are distinctly different experiences and all three are great. And just take a pause here if you wanna see how I think about them. But today is the green chili chicken enchilada that's lighter on the spice, but heavier on the cheese and sour cream. And to be clear, I mean suburban mom like style enchiladas in the best possible way. Like these are the enchiladas that I first had, the ones that I fell in love with, grew up on, and the one that my brother and I actually fought over and dropped a glass dish over. True story. But anyway, let's break down the recipe, then I'll meet you back here for the taste test. So in my green chili chicken enchiladas, there are three distinct components to be prepped, which are the garlic cumin lime chicken, roasted green chilies, and then those green chilies turn into the enchilada verde sauce. Now, all of these can be prepped ahead of time if you have it, so keep that in mind while I go through the recipe if it seems like a lot to do in one night. To start, I have five bone-in skin on chicken thighs, and I quickly remove the bones from them in addition to trimming away some of the excess skin and fat, and then I sprinkled salt on both sides. Now, I'm gonna store these in the fridge overnight, during which the salt will work its way into the meat, and that skin will also dry out, which will crisp up a little bit better in the oven. And if you do have the time, I really recommend it, but this is optional. The next day, preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and meanwhile, crush up six cloves of garlic in a mortar and pestle, along with about a tablespoon of cumin seeds or some fresh ground cumin. Once ground, add 15 grams or a tablespoon of mayo and mix it together. And then you're gonna apply this mayo marinade to the chicken all over it. And this will brown really nicely as well as it helps keep those spices to stick onto the exterior of the chicken without them burning. Place the seasoned chicken in the oven and cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until it reaches roughly 165 degrees Fahrenheit for the chicken thighs. And if the skin hasn't crisped up at this time, I'll pop it under the broiler for the last couple of minutes. Once the chicken is done, just chop it into large cubes. And I like these big chunks in the enchiladas because it makes it feel a bit more satisfying than pooled or shredded in my opinion. And then once chopped, I like to zest some lime and squeeze some lime juice over the top and just mix it in. And this chicken alone is banging and you can have this in the fridge for anything or like today, we'll use it all for enchiladas. But meanwhile, we're gonna set this aside and go on to the roasted green chilies. So these green chilies are exactly like the ones that you buy in the can, they're just homemade, and you can have them in the fridge for days to come. So to start, slice six Anaheim peppers in half, and then I also like to add about one or two poblanos as well if I have them. And Anaheim and poblano peppers are both pretty mild on the Scoville scale, so they are versatile with how you can use them while providing just a little bit of spice. Once sliced, place the peppers cut side down on parchment lined baking sheet and add a little drizzle of oil over the top followed by a sprinkle of salt. Add the peppers to a preheated 425 degree Fahrenheit oven and just cook until the skin has blackened a bit and is noticeably separating from the flesh. After roasting, toss the peppers into a bowl or container and then cover them to let it steam for about 15 minutes and this will just make that flesh come off a lot easier. After 15 minutes, just remove the membrane and outer skin as best you can from the peppers and pile them up. Lastly, we're gonna roughly chop the peppers into kind of a dice and just give them a taste. I like to add in a bit of salt and mix it in. And then I also like to add just the tiniest amount of vinegar to give them that little acidic bite, almost kind of like a hot sauce. And I must say, this is one of those condiments that I might have to start keeping in my fridge more often. I actually made a quesadilla right after I made these because I could not stay away. Anyway, now that the green chilies are done, let's make that enchilada sauce. 
So to a blender, add 200 grams or about a cup of the roasted green peppers, one fourth of a white onion, a handful of cilantro, sprinkle of cumin seeds, a sprinkle of salt, and 250 grams or about a cup of water, or you could use stock here, and then just blend everything until it is smooth. As you can see, the sauce is really nice and pureed, and you could cook this sauce to develop the flavor a bit more, but since the chilies are roasted, I think it tastes good as is, plus it'll cook and warm up a little bit in the oven. Lastly, you wanna give the sauce a taste. Again, I added a bit of vinegar for acidity and a little more salt to help round it out, but now it's time to assemble those enchiladas. So in a nine by 13 baking pan or casserole dish, pour about half of the verde sauce into the bottom of the pan and then get out a stack of warm flour tortillas. First, add a spoonful of sour cream to the upper third of the tortilla and follow that with a solid serving of the chicken. I was using about 80 grams per enchilada. Additionally, I chopped up some pepper jack into cheese strips and add them, about 20 grams. Then if you do have some green chilies left, I like to add a little spoonful of those. Lastly, roll up the tortilla as tightly as you can and just dip it in the sauce in the pan so it covers and then repeat this process until your baking pan is full. I fit about eight to nine in mine. Once the enchiladas are rolled, pour the remaining verde sauce over the top and add a big fistful of shredded Monterey Jack or Pepper Jack or whatever cheese you want to. And then lastly, throw this entire thing into the 450 degree oven to get that cheese nice and bubbly, about 10 or so minutes. Lastly, pull one or two of these out onto your plate and that sauce has really soaked into the flour tortillas. And yeah, these aren't the most photogenic, they kind of look gross, but I hit it with some cilantro, more sour cream and some pickled onions. And these things are absolutely to die for. Just, just wait and see when I do the taste test. So I already took a bite off the piece that I just was cutting for some of the photos and realized that these are also very unphotogenic, but promise these are so, so good. Let me take a couple more bites and then I'll give you my, my thoughts on these. So from a texture perspective, these things are absolutely addictive. I, it's just like the flour tortilla is a little kind of chewy and elastic when it kind of gets built in with some of that sauce and then you get big chunks of chicken you get sour cream, you get cheese. It's, there's something about it that is just like this X factor that I really enjoy. And luckily I've got a massive amount of leftovers. I think these make the best leftovers. Like I will probably finish these in, in like the next two days. Like it's, there's something about these. And, and like I was saying, like this was a true story that my brother and I were fighting over the leftovers for some enchiladas in the fridge and they were like in a glass dish you know, got home after school, wanted a snack, and we were fighting over them, and then it fell on the floor and it broke. And obviously there's glass anywhere, but we were still like picking out little pieces, you know, obviously trying to avoid the glass, but like that's how much I love this kind of style of enchilada. You know, it's definitely not the authentic kind. It's a completely different experience. But again, like, you know, just because something's like not authentic or traditional doesn't mean it's not good. They're just very different experiences. So I love this kind, love the Tex-Mex kind, love the traditional ones. Um, so if you guys wanna check out my traditional video, you guys can do that. But this recipe will be up on my website as well. Highly, highly recommend these things. Like if you show up like to a party or something and with some of these, like dude, you're, you're gonna be you're gonna be the star of the show. I'll put it that way. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. That's gonna wrap it up for me in this one. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.